Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk about a not-so-fun subject and that is my most disappointing reads of 2017. Overall, 2017 was not that great of a reading year for me to be honest. I am currently reading my 28th book so I'm pretty like okay with that number. It's not a lot, especially in contrast to other booktubers. But considering that this year was very hectic for me, I mean, I graduated high school, I went to university, I have had all of these new experiences, and then considering that I'm currently reading my 28th book, I'm pretty happy with it. If I loved all of them, I would have been very, very happy with this reading year. But most of them were three-star reads, which is just like, eh. I do have three honorable mentions, or actually not so honorable mentions, at the end of this video, which were books that I had good hopes for that I thought I was really gonna enjoy, but they were just like a little less good. Still a little disappointing, but they weren't as disappointing as the next four books that I'm gonna mention to you guys, because these books were just like, no, no, no. No. <laughs> First off, so I was expecting that I definitely was not gonna enjoy this book as much as the original series. Like, who enjoyed this book more than the original series? Like, you are a little cray cray. And that is Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, parts one and two, based on an original news story by J.K. Rowling, John Tiffany, and Jack Thorne. The play version, the script version of the play. Oh man, this story is so sh bleh, disappointing. I just, oh, the characters weren't as you know them from the original series. Like, they are so different. After you finish The Deathly Hallows, like I did, and then you read this one, like, the whole series is kind of ruined for you. Not really. I'm just considering this book not to be a part of it, and I just want to erase it from my memory. It affected my view of the ending of The Deathly Hallows a little bit, which is not a good thing. I gave this book a 2 out of 5 stars because I'm, I maybe should even lower the, lower the rating. Like, I just, I don't know. I just really, oh, I can, I want to burn this book, and I don't want to do that with any other books, but this one, I just want to... Safe to say, one of my least favorite reads of this year. Next up, I have A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. Okay, so I have read Patrick Ness. Like, what was I talking about? When I started release, I was like, did I, have I ever read Patrick Ness? Yes, I have with this one. This is the illustrated version or like the original version of the book. Um, it's hardcover um, and it is very, very pretty. But the story itself, I enjoyed it, but it was just not what I was expecting. Everyone says that this is such an emotional story and it will wreck you apart. You will cry like a baby. I did cry a little bit at the end, but I wasn't like a wreck. Like you could still, I still lived, you know? <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm still just 18 years old and I sometimes don't really see the meaning in deeper things. Maybe that's the reason why I didn't enjoy it that much. I, I felt okay about it, but it, it was disappointing because everyone was raving about this so incredibly much and I just thought that it was like, hm, okay. I'm sorry if this is one of your favorite books, but for me it just, I don't know, it missed something. Like I missed a click with the storytelling, with the characters maybe. I just don't know. I'm sorry, guys. Next up, I have If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. And I picked this book up because Maddie and B from Heart F A Heart Full of Books, I love them so much. Go subscribe to their channel. I will leave a link in the description down below. They are twins who read a ton of books, a lot of UK books, because they are from the UK. And I really love how honest they are about their opinions. And they really, really enjoyed this book. This is a, a transgender type of book, which I really enjoyed another transgender book. I loved The Art of Being Normal by Lisa Williamson, I think is her name. That book, ooh, I loved it so much. Definitely go pick it up. I have it on my shelves right there, but I'm just showing you a picture because I'm lazy. That book is so good. Definitely pick that up if you want to read a LGBTQ plus transgender book. This one, though, didn't do it for me. I found that the writing style was so not what I enjoy reading. Also, didn't feel a click with the characters and... It was just a no for me. I was expecting so much, especially because I'm not blaming Maddie and B, but because Maddie and B have such a um, powerful opinion and they are very honest with it. They gave this one, I think, a four or a, or a five out of five stars. I was like, well, then I must enjoy it. But for me, I just felt really flat about this book. And then the final book that really disappointed me, kind of, is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. And don't get me wrong, I love the writing style. I really thought that the characters was like were a ton of fun, but it took me a month to read. And of course I did get into university in that month. So it was a very hectic month. 
but the plot like I liked the beginning especially the first 100 pages I really loved it but then after that it was kind of just like <laughs> Again, that's just like how I feel with all of these books that I've mentioned. I don't know, I can definitely see why people love this book, but for me, it just missed something again. Because it was so hyped, I had really high hopes for it, and I was definitely sure that I was gonna enjoy it. I do love her writing style, and I love the characters, so I definitely think that if Mackenzie Lee comes out with another book, I will definitely pick it up. But the plot was just okay. And then onto my honorable or dishonorable mentions that I just want to mention quickly, which I had like good expectations for, like not that high, but they still kind of disappointed me. So first off, I have Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albatali. I like the story. I wasn't overwhelmed by it. I didn't really have a click with any of the characters, so that was why it was an okay read for me. The same thing kind of happened with me with Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. I read the book in two days though, like it's a super, super quick read, but like many other people, the ending was kind of a little bit predictable and not that great and something I miss the click again with the characters like that is a really important thing for me if I can click with characters if I like them the book instantly becomes a whole lot better the last dishonorable mention is slammed by Colleen Hoover until so far I have loved all of her books this one I think was her first ever published book and the characters fell, fell flat for me again and the love story just also. So let me know in the comments down below what your most disappointing reads of 2017 were. It's not the most fun subject to talk about but also kind of because you can compare opinions with each other. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. You guys can also follow me on all of my different social media pages. Of course I have Goodreads, Snapchat, Instagram plus an email address. Links to all of those will be in the description bar down below. Again, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one.